And welcome back to the show. NMIC is a community-based not-for-profit organization providing social services to residents of Upper Manhattan, as well as the Bronx. Founded in 1979 and with over 100 staff serving New York City, their mission is to serve as a catalyst for positive change in the lives of people in the community on their path to securing a prosperous future. Now, their clients move seamlessly to capacity building services through their holistic programs that are designed to support individuals and families as they develop the tools to transition from crisis to self-sufficiency. Joining us now to share more details is the Executive Director at NMIC, Maria Lazardo, and Maria, good to have you. Thank you so much for having me on your show. It is such a pleasure to be here and to be able to speak on the great work that NEMIC is doing. Yeah, so for somebody who may not be familiar with the organization, I gave a little lead in, but tell us a little bit more. Sure, so we were founded in 1979 to, to be a legal services organization focused on housing, serving community members in Upper Manhattan. Fast forward 42 years and we are a settlement house, meaning that we are embedded in the communities that we serve and our services touch along the lifespan of the families that we serve, or as we say, from twinkle to wrinkle. For example, when we prevent an eviction, we touch the lives of everyone in that household. The abuelita who's had that lease for decades to the grandchild that was born last week and is now living in that apartment. So our services really have impact across the lifespan. So today we are in four offices, two that are in Upper Manhattan, one in Housing Court in Manhattan that focuses on eviction prevention and our Bronx site at, 20, at 8 Clinton Place that was started in uh, 2016 to really be in the community of the Bronx so we can provide housing and immigration work. Today, our programs serve, uh, we're focused on the following areas, on housing, on immigration, on benefit access and finance, on community wellness, on education and career services, on holistic services. And so we are very proud to serve approximately 14,000 community members a year. And since COVID, our services moved to a virtual model, but we are still providing key services. So folks can reach us through our dedicated hotline and intake line that we started last year. And the number is 929-415-8745. And through the hotline, you can access everything that we do, including the food pantry that we had to expand in order to meet the increased need when it came to food insecurity. Yeah, well, let's talk about a couple of things that you have on the on the table here. We talk about legal services. Obviously, during this COVID-19 pandemic, we know that coming out of it after the rent moratorium, a lot of tenants are going to need legal services. Tell us about what you're seeing, what you're experiencing, your involvement with regards to legal services, and particularly that in regards to tenants face, facing eviction. So housing is a human right. And to us, providing eviction prevention and tenant organizing is key. In order for our community members to remain in the communities that they have lived in for decades, that they love, that they have their roots in, it is important that we provide eviction prevention and tenant organizing. So our eviction prevention services are focused on, you know, having a paralegal, having an attorney do the work that it need, that needs to be done in order to support that family. Whether it is a uh, non-petition, a, a payment, a non-payment petition, we work with the families in order to access benefits that they're eligible for in order to be able to pay the rent. It may be a holdover proceeding where the landlord is working to get the family out. And so we also put in the work to make sure that that, that uh, family remains housed. And our tenant organizing really focuses on making sure that tenants know their rights, that they have the education they need in order to stand as a collective and take on the landlord. And so we're seeing that, you know, tenants are being harassed. Landlords are seeing this as an opportunity to evict folks so that way they can bring in new tenants and start increasing the rent. But we're not gonna allow that. And so during COVID, we did see a pause due to the rent moratorium, but we know that folks have not had the income that uh, for a year. And so they are behind on their rent for a year. So we applaud the state that allocated $2.4 billion for rental assistance. We're still waiting on the state for guidelines on how that money can be um, allocated to tenants who are gonna need it to pay their rent for the past year. But we're also gonna have to do a lot of work for tenants who are not eligible for this uh, rental assistance as landlords begin to start the eviction process, as housing court opens up again. But I wanna be very clear that our work to fight to make sure that our community members remain in, this, remain in their homes, remain in their communities is going to be key 
um, to secure our community members. Yeah, it's going to be key. I mean, when you think about what's going on right now, keeping people in their homes is, a, is, is going to be the priority. Uh, but we know that after COVID uh, moves past a little bit further, we can certainly experience more, more with the high rates of evictions. You mentioned about the food and food distribution and being that food pantry. What have you seen as far as your organization in terms of dealing and the increased need? Well, uh, prior to COVID, we knew that food insecurity was an issue for some of our community members. And that's why the benefit access work is so important, making sure that we connect folks to SNAP, you know, food stamps, as is commonly known, or cupones in the community. So that work is really, really key and needs to continue. And I know the federal government has expanded the amount of funds that people will now get under SNAP. So that is really key to meeting some of the food insecurity needs. But we also saw that people didn't have food to put on the table at the end of the day when they lost their jobs, where many of our immigrant community members and many of our community members work in the service industry. And those were the first ones that closed, the beauty salons, the restaurants. People have been unemployed for a really long time. They may be back at work now, maybe at a reduced capacity. So food insecurity is a big, big issue. We used to run a food pantry with our partner, the West Side Campaign Against Hunger, where they brought in a mobile truck once a month to feed 125 families during COVID and starting in May of 2020, we had to expand those services and do it on site where RISCA drops off the food here. And through our staff and volunteers, we were able to mobilize. And today we serve 300 families a month. We've distributed over 80,000 pounds of food. We even distribute pet food because we were seeing that some of our community members, they love their pets. Their pets are their family. And we don't want them to choose between feeding themselves or feeding their pets. So through a partnership with the ASPCA at first and now the Hungry Pet Project, we've been able to feed over 300 pets a month. So this is really incredible. So food insecurity is something that we will continue to battle because it is unconscionable that in 2021, New Yorkers, anyone in this country should be going to bed hungry because we don't have the food to get it to them. Yeah. In addition to talk about the food insecurity, I want you to share a little bit about health care. We got a few more minutes left, just a few more minutes, but I want to talk about health care. When you talk about the issue of health care, recognizing there's this disparity in health care, particularly in the borough of the Bronx, one of the unhealthiest, the unhealthiest borough and the unhealthiest county uh, in this in the state of New York. Talk to us about that. Healthcare is a human right, and all our community members should have access to quality, culturally competent healthcare. And so, it is crucial that we work in partnership with the local hospitals to make sure that our community members have access to quality services within their institutions. We also have to make sure that there is healthcare access. And by making by enrolling people in uh, whether it's Medicaid, Mer Medicare, or the other plans, it is a key service that we can do for our community members because we need to make sure that they are connect they are connected. And as we have seen during COVID, our communities, our black and brown communities have been hit hardest. Why? Because we have, you know, a bunch of healthcare issues that we need to address, whether it is diabetes, hypertension, heart problems, and it's all been exacerbated because of COVID, and we have died at a faster rate. So it is really important that we put in the work to do the preventive care to make sure that our community members are healthy. So the next time there's any kind of pandemic or health crisis, our community members are better equipped to deal with it, not only physically, but that they have the resources in place that they can navigate, and so that way they they also have access to the quality care that they deserve. So for people who want more information, how do they get connected to you? So right now you can reach our, you can call us at our general number, which is 212-822-8300. And that you can, you can reach out to us for both services in Manhattan and the Bronx. We also have our intake hotline and I'll give you that number again, which is 929-415. 8745. I also want to add that uh, we have we were doing work around vaccine access because we know that our community members it was going to be a challenge to navigate the online systems. And so we are operating a hotline dedicated to connecting folks to appointments at the armory at the New York Presbyterian Armory vaccine site and uh, folks who live in Harlem, Washington Heights, Inwood and the South Bronx are eligible to call the hotline. They'll get a live person that will schedule their appointment. You can call between 9 a.m. and 445. And the vaccine hotline number is 646-838-0319. 
Uh, Maria, thank you so much for some helpful information. Thank you for the work that you're doing to enhance the community and uh, much needed, especially uh, during this time and this season. Maria Lazaro, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. All righty. Well, let you know now, if you want more information, do visit their website, nmic.org. Again, follow them on social media at nmic. NYC. Take a quick break. We've got more open, so stay with us. We'll return right after this.